So, and so following the meeting of the Town Services and Outreach Committee, the Town Council to order on October 24th, 2024, it is 10.06 a.m. and uh, we have all members present. Um, this meeting is uh, being conducted uh, via remote means. Uh, members of the public um, are able to um, access the meeting via Zoom or by telephone. And uh, this uh, is a Zoom meeting, so there is no uh, public um uh, attendance uh, permitted for this meeting. Um, let me just check to make sure that everybody who's on the committee can hear and be heard and uh, start with uh, Bob Hegner. Yep, present. Hal Lord, uh, oh, Hal is not with us at the moment. She, uh, had, she had joined and then maybe she had, oh, we'll keep an eye out for Yes, uh, Jennifer Taub. Yes, I'm here. And Councilor Ryan. Present. And Hal Lord, are you present? Yes, present. Okay, so we have all five members of the committee who are present. Uh, and so the meeting is called to order. Um, I guess we will stay with the order of the agenda and go to public comment. Um, but I do want to um, advise everyone that we're going to be joined, uh, if possible, by the town manager for a very brief period. He is in, out of town at a different meeting. And so, um, and he just has one reappointment to present. But um, we do um, allow, uh, allow for public comment, and uh, uh, public comment can be on any topic that is related to the committee's charge. It does not have to be something that is on the agenda. We ask that comments be limited to three minutes. Um, I have one person who's raised their hand. If anybody else who's in the audience would like to be recognized, they too should raise their hand, but please bring uh, Tracy Zafi in then. To, and good morning, Tracy. Hi, good morning. Um, yeah, so I wanted to come to the meeting today because I normally am not able to because I have conflicting work meetings. Um, that meeting was canceled this morning. Um, and I did email yesterday, late last night, um, just about just my concerns about using that MassDOT 2021 procedures on speed zoning guide, just because it does not have some of the latest updates. I have contacted MassDOT about that before. And I know it continues to be on the MassDOT website. I'm hoping that at least I can have some note there saying that it, some of the guidance in that document is based on the now outdated 2022, I mean, 2012 Massachusetts amendments to the MEUTCD. Um, so I'm not sure how applicable that guidance is for the school zoning. And that's the question I brought up. Um, I am also interested, of course, in the topic of the Transportation and Parking Commission. I know that this is a topic that the TSO intends to take up at a number of different meetings. I wasn't really sure which parts of the charge um, would be taken up at different meetings. If that information is available, just a sort of general guideline, that would be helpful. I mean, I'm happy to comment on different sections of it. I do think NTAC is supportive of the creation of the commission. Um, you know, ever since the creation of the council, there have been issues with TAC, just in terms of what is tax, like what, what why does TAC exist? Um, what should TAC be doing? What should TAC not be doing? Um, we have trouble getting quorum at our meetings. You know, we are advisory only. And I was told actually um, a few years ago that actually TAC was gonna be uh, disbanded completely because since the council were keepers of the public way, there was really no need for TAC. So I do see like the best path forward is having a transportation and parking commission, which has both resident members as well as staff so that um, conversations on these issues can take place together. Like currently as it is, and I have been forwarded some emails that come into the TAC email address, which don't come directly to me, they come to DPW and they're forwarded at DPW's discretion. But when people are feeling frustrated about 
um, what's happening in terms of safety or certain intersections or certain sidewalks or whatever. Um, and I think one challenge currently is that because we are all residents on tech and, um, and we have no staff is that it's very, again, we don't have any authority to like do anything. Um, and I do see there are a lot of benefits to having all the people like staff who can make those decisions in the room together with the residents and also just having those conversations take place together because currently I've talked to some people who write they they will reach out on these issues to their counselors or they will reach out to the town manager. They will reach out sometimes to DPW, sometimes they will reach out to the police and the same individuals may reach out to different people. And when they do so, they get a lot of different responses. And sometimes those are contradictory responses. And I think that that's like a messaging issue that's confusing to the public. It's inefficient and it'd be great if instead those conversations would take place like in the central in a central committee and a central forum. And then there wouldn't be that confusion. And I think that that would make the public happier as well. So again, I'm, I'd be happy to talk more in a meeting or come as a speaker. I, mean, I do support the idea of a joint meeting with um, TSO and TAC and the Disability Action Advisory, I guess they're now a council um, commission, but um, I'm not sure exactly on the idea of having an in-person meeting. Again, we have challenges as TAC even having quorum online um, and, you know, we currently have out of the seven members, we currently only seven members could be on the committee. We currently have six. One of our members is also on the Charter Review Commission, which also meets on Thursdays. So that conflicts with TAC. Um, I'm just not sure if we would be there. I think that there could be some members there at such a joint meeting if it was held in person, but I'm not sure we would have a quorum. But um, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tracy. Are you going to be able to... Uh stay or do you need to no leave? i can go thank you i mean i can stay sorry if okay. i'm welcome to come back in i'm you know unfortunately yeah, i don't know no, if I, was is, I was i didn't know whether i should hold my comments you know until you're having those discussions but thanks. yeah no, i'll leave it to um Councilor ryan's discretion later as i will explain but thank you very much appreciate your comments and i don't see anyone else who's requested public comment um going to the agenda um we'll continue on i may present the town council the town manager appointment later um uh, the town manager can't join us but we're not going to do that right now and um i do want to go ahead and move to the uh, proposed transportation parking commission amendments um the, this is the first real discussion of the um a topic and um, I couldn't answer your question the question that came as a public comment about the uh, topics to be considered because uh, we've delegated that responsibility to vice chair of the committee Councilor Ryan and um, I'm actually going to turn the meeting over to him for the most part for the next section so Councilor Ryan Thanks. Thanks, Andy. Um, what I want to do is uh, first just review a couple of things. Um, and I think some of this may address Tracy's questions and uh, in terms of what we're going to discuss in what order. Uh, nothing is fixed in stone, but um, I did send a memo to the committee. It is a public document. It does lay out the five broad topics that I suggest that we use to govern our discussion. Um, tonight, or excuse me, this morning, we're going to start with uh, um, the the question of purpose, uh, why why this change is being proposed, and if time permits, um, maybe turn to scope. Um, and as we'll, we'll see in a minute, there are there are four, three other topics um, yeah, that um, are something that that I think will govern how we go about this. Um, I'm going to talk a fair amount at the start, and so people should be free to interrupt, raise raise their hands, or just just interrupt if they have a question, or if, if something's not clear, or if they think I'm going on too long. I feel that it's probably appropriate to say a little bit just about the background and history of this before we turn to the question of of why it's being proposed. Um, and the goal, at least this first part of the presentation, is to eventually end up in a discussion of the members of the committee about whether they agree with, the, you know, the, the question being, there is there a problem 
why is this being done um, is the focus of, of today's first part. And I'd like to get to a discussion of that and hear what you all think. Do you agree there's a problem? Um, are there other pieces that, that maybe should be highlighted, et cetera, et cetera? So the goal is eventually get to a discussion, um, but there's going to be a fair amount of me talking for, for a bit. And Andy, you're the chair. And if it gets to be too much, just interrupt me. If people have questions or, or concerns, they can just interrupt. Um, the first thing I wanted to point out is that there are five, uh, I count five key documents that you all should have in your possession, um, either on your computers or in my case, I actually have it in hard copy as well. Um, the first is the memo that I just alluded to that I sent to the committee on September 22nd on how I think we should proceed. Um, I wasn't present at the meeting, but my understanding is that the committee received it favorably and they felt that it was a good start. Um, as I said, it's not written in stone. It can be revised, changed, altered at any time. Um, but I laid out, um, I think it's five topics. Anyway, that document should be something you should have handy. Um, the second document is the draft charge itself. Um, which is dated 7 10 24, and then it was revised 8 8 24. And the third document is the memo that the, uh, that the town manager sent uh, to the council on 8 19 24 regarding the transportation reorganization. Um, those two documents I suggested should be the sort of the governing documents as we proceed the charge itself and then and then the town manager's memo outlining uh, the uh, argument for it and uh, what he's proposing. And I used a fair amount of that in today's presentation. So those are those two documents. Um, then there is proposed changes to the town. There's a document that um, I believe was submitted also by Paul. It doesn't have a date, but essentially proposed changes to the town council policy regarding control and regulation of the public ways. This is a, a document that has a series of, of alterations and changes. It basically shows what um, the town manager is proposing to change. And that addresses the question of scope. And I don't know if we'll get to that today, but if we do, I have a document that will supplement that. But that's the fourth document. Um, and finally, there is a Mass City Traffic Commission summary report, um, which basically just is three pages, and it gives you a kind of overview of what other cities and towns, which are called cities, um, do with transportation, how they how they handle it. And um, it's basically for information. My understanding is that was created by our planning department. Um, at least that's what I, I gather from looking at it. Anyway, it's an interesting document to look at, and it, it my takeaway initially is just that um, towns, cities in, in the Commonwealth deal with this in a lot of different ways. Um, and so, but that's something that, so those are the five documents that I'm aware of. Um, so in August of 2024, the, the town manager submitted to the council a request to reorganize how the town makes decisions regarding transportation and parking. And in essence, it would involve dissolving the current uh, Transportation Advisory Committee, TAC, and creating a new body, Transportation and Parking Commission, or TPC. It would also involve revisions to the current uh, Town Council policy regarding the control and regulation of the public ways. According to the Amherst Home Rule Charter, Section 2.14, the Town Council is the keeper of the public way and as such, quote, shall control and regulate the public ways, end quote. In making his proposal to the town council, the town manager submitted both a draft charge and a memo outlining the case for his proposed change. And in my memo to you, I propose using these two documents as the controlling documents as we make our way through this process. I also propose five broad categories for discussion as a way to get a handle on this. And as I said, the committee seems to be in agreement. Now, today, I'd like to begin with the purpose, uh, basically, what's the problem um, and, and uh, uh, what we think, uh, what the, the manager thinks this uh, will do to address it, and if time permits, uh, turning to the question of scope of the proposed changes. The remaining topics involve the composition of the proposed commission, its impact on the public and its relationship with the council, and finally, decision-making, implementation, and visioning, sort of a fifth kind of grab bag category involved how decisions would be made, what would govern those decisions, how this would be implemented, and the question of, of long-range planning or vision. It occurred to me uh, last night as I was preparing this that actually there should be an added category, perhaps the most important one, which I left out, which is actually going through the charge line by line. So um, I'm assuming that would be something we do at the end of this process, um, but again, that's up to you all. Um, so we probably should add as, a, as a, a, a further piece of this puzzle is then taking the charge document and going through it based on our discussion uh, line by line. Um, 
So the area of transportation and parking, or more broadly, the control and regulation of the public ways involves a host of issues and a very large cast of characters. It's an area which touches almost everyone in town on a regular basis and in very direct ways. All of us on a daily basis walk, drive, use public transit, and or bike in town. Not only does this topic impact us, all, I think it's fair to say that we all see ourselves as quote unquote experts, and we all have often very strong opinions on this topic, whether it's the state of our roads and sidewalks, the, what we see some of us as the epidemic of speeding, pedestrian bike safety, roundabouts, et cetera, et cetera. As I think fair to say that we probably hear more from our constituents on issues related to the control and regulation of the public ways than we do on all other issues combined. So vehicular, pedestrian and bike safety, parking requests, traffic design and controls, public transportation service and accessibility, crosswalks, rapid flashing beacons, enhancements to walking and bike networks, improvement of intersections, traffic calming measures, addressing concerns of those with visual or physical challenges in using our transportation system, creating safe routes to schools, requests to install or relocate utility poles, traffic control signage, the list goes on. Under the prior form of government, the Select Board created the Transportation Advisory Committee, or TAC, which was charged with advising the Select Board and the manager, quote, on all transportation matters, unquote. That was in its charge. Its first meeting as TAC was in December of 2016. TAC was itself a successor body to prior committees, including the Public Works Committee, the Public Transport, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Committee, and the Downtown Parking Working Group, to name three. To guide its work, TAC used the master plan from 2010 and reaffirmed in 2020, the Amherst Transportation Plan from 2015, the Amherst Bicycle and Pedestrian Network Plan, which they helped shape in 2019. It also, as TAC, uh, helped create a complete streets policy, at, which was adopted by the select board, and they also have developed crosswork design standards. So they've accomplished a lot and done a lot since 2016. Um, and there are a fair number of documents out there already existing um, that we don't want to lose track of um, as we go through this process. Yet, as we, I think, already have heard this morning during public comment, and we certainly read and, and heard from other sources, in spite of the real work that this committee has done and the real contributions it has made to the town's transportation network, the committee, TAC, feels the current process is inefficient. It only provides, the TAC only provides input when requested by the council and as a result has little role to play, they feel, in many of the transportation issues that come up. And so they feel sort of left out. And um, as we heard uh, a few minutes before, there's uh, the sense, at least from some on TAC, that uh, a new approach is needed. So um, what's the problem? Well, there's part of it right there. We have a transportation advisory committee that um, has a sense that they're really not being effective and they would like to see some changes. Um, in addition, as we've, uh, there's a general frustration among the public and some counselors about decision-making process when it comes to transportation issues, most commonly road and sidewalk improvements, but it covers a lot of areas. People have questions about what the priorities are, um, how are improvements funded, who makes the decision. Um, there just seems to be generally a, a, an issue of, of lack of transparency, uh, a sense of, of clear and transparent processes. That's one uh, complaint, one issue. The second, uh, no single or obvious venue uh, seems to exist where concerned residents can express concerns or make requests regarding transportation issues. Again, as we heard earlier this morning, do they go to TAC? Do they go to DPW? Do they go to the town manager? Do they go to their council reps? Do they go to the council as a whole? Um, the lines of authority are um, jumbled. And again, there's a lot of confusion about um, who's, who's in charge and where you should go to, to get answers to the questions. Third consideration is what I call the time sink. Um, a considerable amount of time, council time is taken up uh, during our meetings on matters that seem, at least to some of us, relatively routine and could be handled more differently and perhaps more efficiently. One classic example is utility pole placements, but there are others. Um, so there's the issue of, of time spent by the council that perhaps could be better spent. And then there's, I think, also the issue of staff time, which is also a, a source of of a challenge or problem. Um, basically, the, the staff is often required to attend multiple meetings on the same issue, TSO, TAC, DAAC, um, the council itself. Um, and so they're, they're often finding they're doing the same thing over and over again. 
Um, and there seems that doesn't seem to be very efficient use of their time or their expertise. Um, and finally, we have a fairly large number. I've just mentioned the number of them already. Uh, excellent plans and studies addressing transportation issues, but there doesn't seem to be a single body that keeps them in focus and, and looks to see whether they're being implemented and updated, um, the whole issue of vision and long range planning. So those are the five um, uh, reasons that I uh, identified in, in reviewing the documents and thinking through this. And in, one, in our discussion in a moment, we might want to add to this or at least comment on it. Maybe you don't share those concerns, but those are the concerns that I've identified um, from what I've read and from what I've heard, um, starting with tax dissatisfaction and then the whole issue of, of, of trying to provide greater transparency so people know what the rules are, uh, greater accountability so they know who's in charge and who they should talk to, um, a more efficient use of staff and council time, and a process that would involve ideally better long-range planning and visioning when it comes to transportation and, and uh, the public way. So um, that's enough for me. Um, I would like to hear from you all um, about your thoughts on that, whether that resonates with you, whether there are other uh, issues or concerns that should be added to this list, or whether you even agree with it. You might feel that there really isn't a problem that needs, needs to be addressed. So uh, I want to open it up to discussion and input from um, my colleagues. So I guess uh, both hands up and uh, start with uh, Bob. Yeah, the the the, the I, George, I I agree with pretty much everything you said. The only question I have is. Will a creating this commission um, really change the way that residents bring up issues? I mean, they're gonna they're gonna go to whoever they think is gonna give them the answer they want, um, and or these are the people they're they're used to, you know, interacting with, um, and so um, it would take some education upon you know, the police, you know, the, the DPW, the council to forward these questions to say to the constituent, yeah, I, I see your problem, but I want to send it to this TPC because they're the ones who should, who are going to deal with it. Um, and I don't know whether that's going to be satisfactory to somebody who brings a problem to a counselor, say, or to the police. So anyway, your thoughts on that would be helpful. I certainly think that that is going to take a fair amount of education and there's going to be um, uh, a period in which the confusion will, will still continue to be the case. But I feel um, that having one place where these topics can all be raised and where everybody in the room uh, is, is, is together, um, both the, the residents, the, the, uh, uh, the experts, uh, et cetera, um, would go a long way to uh, addressing these concerns. I, I think um, I th obviously, I think there is a problem. I think this is a, a, a good way to try to address it. But you're right, Bob, it, it's we're going to have to see how it plays out. I think one thing to keep in mind is that what being proposed here is a change in policy. So it's not written in stone. It could be changed at any time. The council can go back and revise it. It's not like a bylaw. Um, you know, it's, if we find something's not working or if we find that that something is is is, is confused, um, it wouldn't be that difficult to go in and and alter the policy. Um, it just would require a majority of councillors to agree that that's what should be done. Um, so there's, a, I think there's a fair amount of flexibility and uh, in this approach, um, but I do agree that it's going to take a fair amount of education. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure we'll be able to satisfy everybody, but, um, and that's one of the questions. Maybe some of you feel that really, you know, most people aren't that concerned. They're not, you know, they're perfectly satisfied with, with going to their council reps or going to DPW or going to Paul and they get the answers they want. Um, the sense I'm getting is that's not the case, but that's just me. Uh, Jennifer? Jennifer? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so this is actually uh, very personal to, uh, to me in my district, I think. I agree that utility poles, street signs, I mean, even all the conversation we had recently about UMass signs, into, I don't think the council needs to be 
we should have bigger fish to fry than that. So I'm, I'm happy with certain, you know, those kinds of responsibilities being in a parking and transportation commission. But I feel I'm very concerned. And so I would certainly want to see counselors represented, probably two on this body if we go, you know, if we go to the commission. But I am very concerned. I would not want my constituents. I represent two precincts that, you know, are campus and downtown adjacent. We have many parking and traffic issues. And if I had to say to my constituents, you know what, I, I this is this is just not in my bailiwick anymore. I have to send you to this commission. There may be nobody on the commission that has any connection to our district to really understand what's going on there. So I can give two examples. For 15 years, there was an effort to make Sunset, Elm, and Lincoln, particularly Lincoln, no parking during the day, during the school year, on weekdays. It took over 10 years to be able to achieve those restrictions. And without the counselors before me started the process, George represented the district before the redistricting, but without patting myself on the back, but it was my job as the counselor for, you know, that district, the former district three, this was the last council section session to really shepherd those, the adoption of those restrictions through the council. And I spent a good part of the year, the first year I was on the council, making sure that happened. And I saw with the select board and in previous council sessions, when this issue of parking restrictions on Lincoln. Lincoln is a two-way street. It's the main access route from Northampton Road and Amity Street, just for background, for those of you who weren't on the council the last session. Um, there was on-street parking. There was literally bumper-to-bumper -bumper parking on Lincoln from Cosby to Amity Street. Cars go, there's a lot of traffic going and coming from UMass in the morning and later in the day. Traffic had to stop to let cars pass through because you couldn't have two-way parking with all the cars parked on the street. People couldn't get into their driveways because they were parking over the curb cuts. It was a nightmare, and it took way too long to get parking restrictions. We got them a year and a half ago. It has been life-altering for people that live on Sunset, Lincoln, and Elm. And it, it didn't cost the town anything. Nobody's the worst off because the 25 or so cars that used to park out there now have to park someplace else but it has changed life for people on the street. And I would hate to, I, it would not be fair to the constituents to not have a counselor who could really shepherd this through. And when it would come before other bodies previously, people would say, oh, well, we're gonna wait until we're looking at parking restrictions all over Amherst. We're just not gonna focus on two or three streets. And that is my concern for a commission that that's what they would be told. If if they if res if it was that street specific that we would be told, well, why would we change, you know, have parking restrictions on one street and not the other? And now on McClellan, I don't know if again, I don't want to bore you with this, but you know, what we have in certain districts is McClellan is probably as wide as many of your driveways. It's a two-way street, there's on-street parking on one side, it's tiny houses, there's lots of infill. So there's a lot of residents with two units and eight cars. I've been counting the number of cars parked on the street during the day, and there's like 67 on this narrow street. It's also um, permitted for the traffic school, so there's parking lessons going on. The street was built before there were vehicles. So uh, all to say that in some neighborhoods, you have very, very street-specific issues that should not be just thrown to the bureaucracy. So that is my concern, that I feel like the, the system we have now is not perfect, but at least the residents have someone that can champion very serious parking and traffic issues in specific neighborhoods. So I, I just need to, as we move forward, would need to be assured that there would still be that connection between the council representative and the neighborhood to the commission. I'm, I'm sorry for going on for so long. I just I my hand. Yeah, yeah, Andy, if I just may make a quick point, yeah. um, and I, maybe in the end we'll just we'll just play it this way. But I'm trying to get us to focus on just do you think there's a problem? And I guess if I were to translate Jennifer's comments, 
Um, yes, there is a problem, but her concern is that this may not be the, there's a concern that this may not be the right solution to the problem. For those particular problems. You know, I think utility pole signage, there's other things that would be appropriate for the commission. So, so we do have at some point, we will have a discussion on the impact of this on counselor constituent relations and on the very question that you've raised. So we'll come back for further discussions. And so, if I could just ask, the reason I went into all that is just so you all understand where I'm coming from in this conversation. <laughs> well, some of us have very uh, long memories. <laughs> <laughs> and But I agree with Bob and Hala, um, certainly they, they would not uh, perhaps be quite as conversant as you and I and Andy are with this. Uh, it did take up an enormous amount of council time, took up an enormous amount of committee time. And um, that would be my concern. Um, but it but got I, done. <laughs> it got done. Um, I, you know, whether it would be done more efficiently or whether it would have been done under a new system is a fair question. And that's something we need to discuss. And it's noted. And I'm, I'm taking notes as we proceed through here. But uh, I appreciate thanks. your indulgence, all of no, you. No, Thank it's, you. It's, yeah, no, I hear you. It's an important issue. Andy. Yeah, I was interested if Guilford is. Uh, listening in whether he can share with us from the staff perspective how the staff gets complaints uh, from citizens about issues that are really what we're talking about and um, how the staff works together and tries to sort them out to present to elected bodies. And if I may, uh, I'd like to hear from Guilford if he's willing to speak. He certainly doesn't have to. Um, but I'd also like to hear from him, again, related to the topic on hand. Does he see a problem? Is there a problem here that needs to be addressed? That's kind of the focus of this first part of the discussion. Um, a number of problems have been raised, a number of concerns have been raised. And I'm curious if Guilford uh, agrees or if he maybe we're missing some that could be added to this list. Or maybe he says, you know... Um, this is always a problem. It's no, there's no solution. <laughs> anyway, uh, Guilford, if you'd like to speak, please do so. You're not required to. Um, I'll, I'll jump in on that. This is always a problem. Um, Jennifer brought up a, a little small piece of time where there were complaints about Lincoln and Sunset. That was my fourth time going through complaints of parking, Lincoln, Sunset, and Elm. Changes been made throughout all four of those and proposed. Um, so some of these things will just keep coming back and we've seen it. It's not just Lincoln and Sunset. It happens just about every year over by the high school towards the end of the school year when you actually have more drivers because as the school year goes on, people, more people turn 16. Um, the rite of passage in America, you get to drive to school, which is cool. You get to take your friends to school, it's cool. Um, those come up every year too. So there are things that will repeatedly come up. Um, the system we have now provides no clear, concise methodology for people to submit an issue and it get sent to where it needs to go. Um, public works, once, once they start talking to counselors and the town manager, we stop talking to the resident. Simple as that. The resident has decided to exercise his right, privilege, whatever else you want to use for a word there, um, to talk to their counselor and town manager. And when you guys start talking to them, we're not going to step in and, and step in the conversation. We'll wait until we're asked. So there is really, um, there really is, need, there really does need to be a, a systematic way of doing it. We don't work well as a town in this as well because people will complain to different groups and then because the groups think they need to solve it and then we don't talk very well, um, we'll get different things and all of a sudden it'll get to a head and then we'll all come together. Um, so we definitely, some type of group that takes these in, a staff person who can staff this, this process and pull together the information and pull together the comments from all the groups is needed. Um, so that's my take on it. I appreciate that. And I guess since I was the one who asked for your comments, I my concern about the proposal is the number of staff who 
are suggested to be involved in, you know, we talk about wanting to be efficient and are we going to not, how can we be efficient if we have a large number of staff people working through a problem as opposed to one person working through and presenting presenting it to a larger group. Um, had, has any thought been given to how that would work so that you don't have uh, a large number of staff people taking their time to essentially work through the initial stages of what are the problem, is there a problem and is there a solution? Right now, we spend a lot of staff time working through some of these um, because there's no methodology for it. So we already do that. Um, Northampton, their committee has staff as well as the counselors and residents on their committee. Um, theirs work seems to work very well. Um, other communities have that same setup and it seems to work very well. Um, I don't think it's, we're gonna be spending time on it no matter what, it's just a process that goes through one person who can control, not control, but organize the process and keep the information flowing from the residents to the staff, to the committee members and so forth is, is needed. It's, it's something that has to be done. The license committee is the sole, is the one sole group in Amherst that functions that way right now. And they function very, very function well. Um, that process functions well. Um, and, but yes, you got, we have to decide what goes here and what doesn't go here. And then as time goes on, you may change your mind and move, pull things out or push things into this group. I was going to mention the Board of License Commissioners as a model. It's mentioned in the documents. It's mentioned in what the town manager presented to us as, and maybe at some point we would invite someone or someone's from that body to come and talk to us about their experience because the uh, the success of that body, um, and as a kind of model for the success of this body, be interesting to hear from them directly how they have dealt with some of these questions, and and how it works, and what uh, um, you know what would be the best practices. I think some of this would be have to be resolved by the body itself once it were formed. There's there was a certain amount we can't um, uh, over determine this. I think there's a fair amount we have to allow them to to figure out what. Um, but I think we could certainly set up models and we could have a discussion um, that would, would perhaps benefit uh, this body if it were created. Um, Guilford, what I am hearing is that you do think there is a problem, particularly with staff time and with uh, clarity. I mean, some of the, the issues that I've raised in my presentation, it sounds like you would pretty much nod your head and say, yes, this is, this is a problem. And um, you would think that that we should try to see if we can find a, a better way. This, how what that better way will be, finally we don't know. But you would agree that this is something we should be spending some time on. Is that fair to say? Is that a reasonable summary? Yes, I would say that. Okay, the Jennifer. My screen went blank. Um, Guilford, were you finished or? Well, I would just say you might want to also reach out to Northampton and talk to some of their members of their committee. Um, and, and they do have a staff person who is sort of the coordinator of the committee, the, the receiver and the disseminator of information. She might be a, a person you might want to talk to and how, how it functions and how that one works. Do you know what uh, department or uh, what her connection is professionally? She reports through Public Works. We can certainly track that down. And I yeah, think yeah. I, I, uh, I mean, my observation uh, um, is that I think we're recognizing that there is a problem. And um, Jennifer, your uh, presentation was actually very instructive because um, you talked about the role of the council, but you also emphasized that there is a problem because it took an awfully long time to get a solution that worked. Right, but I think it they needed an advocate. <laughs> so that's what I'm concerned. I think if it, in that case, I think if it stayed with the bureaucracy, I don't know that it ever would have 
happened. So that that's my concern. So your question really is how will advocacy take place in this process? Right. Um, will it just go by the boards? Will it just become a bureaucratic kind of thing? Like it just often happens where you just, you know, put your name in or you, you go before a body right. and then you, who knows what will happen. Um, and if you want to advocate, how do you do that? How does the counselor advocate? Um, and would that be appropriate given the system that we're thinking of creating? That's a fair question. Okay. Yeah. And I did have a question. My hand was up about the board, because I don't know the board of license commissioners. Do residents, do they really, you know, are, most of what I imagine comes before them as applications for business licenses. And so are residents really going before that board? I mean, maybe you would, if you had a concern about a business that was impacting you, but so I'm just, that's my question. How much do individual residents really interact with the board of license commissioners? I don't know if any of us have that answer. Yeah, I'll try and find that out. I'll come back to the committee. Well, or we should get uh, some people from the Board of License Commissioners in, which George was alluding to earlier. So I don't know if there's further discussion that at this point we want to go into. Um, what I said is I wanted to just lay out the history of this briefly and identify what I gathered were some of the, the problems or concerns that have been raised by TAC, um, by the town manager, as we've heard from Guilford, from staff. Um, and I think we've touched base on all of them. There does seem to be a sense that there is um, a problem that is worth our time to try and, and, and address. Um, what, that, what the solution will look like is, 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 a, is the next question. And so I was going to turn, uh, unless there's further comment or questions or discussion. Um, oh, the only thing I would add is if, uh, yeah, just yeah. for Tracy, who's still in the attendee group, um, Tracy, yeah. if you have anything that you want to offer on the topic that's being discussed, raise your hand so that we know, and then uh, Athena can bring you back. So go ahead, back to George then. No, good point, uh, Andy. That would be appropriate at this point. Tracy did raise her Yeah, if she would weigh in, that'd be great. Hi. So um, I don't really have much to add. I mean, I think right, George had posed the question of is there a problem, and what's and there? Yes, there is a problem. Um, I do think that I mean the way I've seen other transportation commissions work. You know, I've been talking to the town manager for the last few years, and he and I both research like different commissions around the state. Um, is that they really are a sounding board, a place where resident concerns can be heard. Um, so I do think that there is a role for advocacy there too. You know, it's not just an internal, because you will be having both residents and um, staff on the committee, like the residents can also serve an advocacy role. You know, it's not just something happening internally, you know, without the public. So I'm, I'm not as concerned as... Um, Jennifer on that issue. I mean, I think that anything just like now, right, if people have concerns about a particular neighborhood, like the current process we have, it will go to the council, it will go to TSO, sometimes it will come to TAC or Disability Access Committee. We already have a process like where like the counselors who are concerned with this issue or their constituents like still need to weigh in at different points of the process. And I would see that that would, could be similar if you have a commission. Um, and I mean, I've seen commissions where basically their whole agenda is taking up all the different items that they've received comments or complaints or concerns about, either from staff or from residents, and that's what they spend their whole time on. And residents are able to be heard at those, and then the commission members consider it, and then they decide what actions to take or whether they're going to follow up to the next meeting or so on. So I think there is process that can work. And I agree with Guilford that the Northampton Commission is a good model. Thanks. Thank you, Tracy. Okay, so um, again, speak up or, but um, I put my finger, we put our finger on an issue of, of lack of transparency uh, need for greater accountability, more efficient use of, of staff and council time, and something that hasn't been discussed, maybe will come later, but I think is important, uh, 
uh, better long-range planning and visioning. I listed a whole host of plans that exist, um, and it doesn't seem to me that there is a single body that that tries to to keep them uh, in focus and also goes back occasionally and and asks the question, well, is, you know, are we attending to this at all? Um, uh, there is a, a habit, perhaps a, a longstanding in Amherst, to you know, spend a lot of time and money on plans and, and they're very well done and they go on a shelf and that's where they stay. And I think that another important factor, I personally think, is is the issue of visioning and long range planning. Um, so those are five. And if we have others we want to add, but I'm getting the sense that people agree that these are worth, these are issues that we need to address. So the solution, at least as, as the town manager is proposing it, is to create a body which would combine professional staff um, uh, um, and along with residents and bring them into regular and direct conversation. Um, and we assume that those residents would be people who have expressed some interest or have some background or and or some expertise in transportation related areas. And the purpose of this body would be to make policy decisions on transportation and parking and review staff recommendations uh, for changes to the public way. And as we've already said, that the, the Board of Licensed Commissioners is kind of the model. And I think at some point we should invite um, someone or someones from that body to come. And we also should reach out to Northampton uh, Board and also talk to them, either by getting some kind of uh, you know memo from them or actually inviting them to come and talk if, if they were up to that. Um, but the next thing on my list, and I don't know how we're doing for time, Andy, um, it's now almost 11, um, is to begin to turn to the question of scope. Um, and uh, I'm willing to do that if people are, are uh, want to continue with this, or we could come back at some later time. But the next question would be, what actually is being proposed? What changes are being proposed? And in fact, they're quite considerable. Um, and I think we should get clear on that. And uh, so that would be the next step. Maybe before we do that, we should also should stop and think, are you happy with um, the, the sort of the, the, the process as I've outlined it? It sounds like you've had a chance to look at that memo and you, you thought it looked good. Have you changed your mind? Um, because besides scope, um, then there would be a series of other topics that we would take up over the next few meetings. And I just want to remind people that I'm looking for members of the committee to take the lead on some of these. Um, I'm perfectly willing to do this for every single one. But I think it would be healthier and, and more productive if um, individual members said, well, I'm willing to take on topic X, Y, or Z. Um, and uh, so that's something to not to say right now, but I think you should give some thought to whether you're willing to do that. Because um, if no one does step forward, um, it falls to me to lead the discussion over the next couple of weeks. And I would prefer to, to share that burden, um, if at all possible, because you're, you're just going to get my perspective. Um, and uh, I think my perspective is the best perspective, but <laughs> of course, uh, of course. <laughs> um, so, any thoughts on that? Any thoughts on? I mean, not, I'm not asking people to volunteer now, but I'd like you to give some thought to that. Are you happy? I mean, one thing that I did say that we should add to the list is actually reviewing the charge that should be added. At some point, we're going to have to go through the charge line by line, um, and uh, probably at the end of this process. But that's something that was missing from the original memo. Jennifer? Yeah, no, I think that's a good suggestion <clears throat> for committee members to volunteer to delve into and then present back and kind of lead the discussion on different topics. So also the whole burden shouldn't <laughs> fall yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I do think that we've <laughs> identified the that there is a problem and it needs to be addressed, that this is not a it's not efficient for the members of the public. It's not efficient for staff. It's not efficient for uh, the council. And uh, there's a lot of uh, duplication and confusion that exists. And is, that, is there anybody who disagrees that that's where we've come to? Because we have a lot of questions that we've still identified, but I think that we've agreed that there is a problem. Um, why don't we hold scope for a minute, for a few minutes and try and get, see if we can get to some of the other agenda items. Um, 
and uh, then come back to it because I think that we do want to spend a couple minutes on the uh, Southeast Street, the two subtopics that are listed under five. And uh, secondly, the uh, at least start the discussion on the school safety zone issue. Uh, and would that be okay to uh, make sure that we have enough time to get to those two other issues? But I think we might have time to come back to scope and within the, our usual allotted time. Uh, the two issues under the Southeast Street um, proposal that was put forward was that there was a list of comments and questions that had come from a variety of sources, and I put it together in a single document. And uh, I think what we were planning to do was that we as a committee would see if there's anything that we wanted to add or delete from the list and um, or whether we just want to forward it as is and then um, try and work with uh, Paul and Guilford to set up a, a meeting where we could then start to um, hear some responses and suggestions about the topics that were there. So uh, question A, 5A is, uh, does is the list seem like the right list? And can we adopt it? Bob? Yeah, I, I, I think it's the right list. I mean, I don't see anything left off of here, but I do think it's kind of long and there's duplications on the list. So I'd be willing to take a shot at consolidating these into you know, fewer questions. Um, so rather than having people, I mean, for example, you know, uh, access to direct ac availability, direct access from Main Street and Bedford Town Road are the same as I kind of raised in my comments too. So I think if we could, we can consolidate these and make them so that we're, there's no duplication in the, in the, in the set, I think it would benefit Guilford and, and everybody else. I think that our one experience of having done something similar was along those lines because um, we had a lot of questions on one topic and then we reorganized them. Didn't eliminate the questions, but grouped them together so that um, we would know that they came from multiple sources um, multiple counselors, but we uh, <clears throat> tried to group them so that it would more, be more efficient for everybody to address them. Uh, that's fair enough. I mean, if that's, if, you know, I, as I said, I'm willing to take a shot at this. Andy, if you want me to, I can do that. And then you can kind of weigh in and see whether it hits the mark or not. Um, uh, George, yes. Yeah. Um, I guess I have a question about the process, how this is going to actually, um, whatever list of questions we finally agreed to, I think this is fine. I could be cut down a bit. Um, but, um, it, we've got a, a great place to start from, but, um, what, what's next? What, what happens next? I mean, are we ready to talk about that? Maybe you want to just focus on the, um, the, the list of questions, um, but uh, uh, what 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 would be the next step, or how how's this going to play out? Um, a meeting, a joint meeting at a particular time and place. Yeah, I think who, that the, the, the invited. question of the joint meeting. Uh, we've had a lot of comments, and um, the uh, you know we've heard from um, DAC. Um, and DAC's concern is that um, in-person meetings are difficult for them because of um, getting to the meetings that they have a lot better participation because they can, now that they can meet by Zoom than when they were um, needing to 
you frequently arrange special transportation uh, to get to meetings. And then there's the other question is the timing of the meetings that uh, we seem to be getting into some difficulty because uh, uh, DA is, uh, TAC has uh, members who are um, working of limited time and uh, they're uh, having issues right now that were described during public comment by uh, Tracy. And uh, so put the, put it all together, um, the idea of an in-person meeting was, uh, well, you know, it's a good, good suggestion, but it's turning out to be a logistical challenge. Bob? Uh, I didn't, I'm sorry, I forgot to take my hand down, but I'll, I'll just weigh in and say, um, you know, maybe a hybrid meeting would be the solution. Um, you know, we, we can do that too. I have to ask Gil Guilford is whether uh, what you envision doing at an in-person meeting could be done at a hybrid meeting. It could be done at a hybrid meeting, um, but it's just kind of hard to point at things on the screen and make things move and answer people's questions by pointing at the drawing on the screen. Um, that's why I was recommending a more in-person meeting, but a hybrid could be both. Those who really have, those who can make it would get the most information out of it and hopefully we can make things work for the others who are in the room or in the mm. Zoom room. Yeah, I was trying to imagine as uh, when you're doing a hybrid meeting, whether you need to actually have, um, as you will, a camera on the participants in the room, especially if you're working with documents on paper. There is no substitute. We may have to have a camera like we can show over them and show so we can show things too. Councilor Ryan? So who would be invited? Um, it sounds like it would be uh, DAAC, um, obviously the committee, Guilford and any staff that he felt would be appropriate, um, and TAC. Is that is that the list that is there? And, I'm, and then it would there would be a period for public comment, I assume. Um, it, it wouldn't be a hearing. It wouldn't be in that format. It would be basically a joint meeting of these bodies to go through uh, the, t the issue and to get questions answered, to get clarity. And at some point in the meeting, we would solicit public comment. But it would be those four entities. Is that basically it? Yes, I think that would be a good way to do it. And it would be in the evening. And how soon do we want to do this? I mean, I'm always an advocate of doing things sooner rather than later because everything takes longer than than you ever can imagine. But, um, uh, and I'm not sure we can settle this right now, but I don't, we could at least begin to think about it. Uh, is there anyone who wouldn't be available for an evening meeting? We meet in the morning as a rule, but this would be an evening meeting. I mean, I think evening, I'll be, yeah. be. And, and the point was also so we could sit around with maps and really. So you like the idea of hybrid, you like the idea of actually being as many of us. Yeah, as it sounded like Guilford thought we could really yeah. see, you know, di what different possibilities were. It's like when the planning board for university, right, yeah. they're actually meeting, going over maps. Right, right. So how soon do people feel this should be addressed? Is this, um, and I mean, and also what day of the week, does it matter? Is it, um, would it be a Thursday evening? Um, well, I think that the, Thursday evenings, yeah. that, that could be an issue, um, but we could just do it on a week that doesn't have a GOL meeting. Um, Tuesday evening, uh, does, do does, people care? Yeah. Does TAC meet Thursday evenings? Uh, it meets at 5.30. On a Thursday evening. On, on so, Thursdays. So we could try to align it with a TAC meeting. Tracy's. Yeah. Um, hi, somebody let me back in the room. So TAC does meet. We do meet on traditionally um, on Thursday evenings. 
And as George pointed out, there is the GOL meeting. That's now the first and the third Thursdays. And then I believe the Charter Review Commission has tentatively been meeting on the, the other Thursdays when they start at six. I mean, so TAC has actually been looking at moving our meetings forward to make them earlier. We do have a TAC meeting today and we will be discussing you know, what might work for TAC in terms of coming to a joint meeting, hybrid, when it could be, and so on. Um, I do like the idea of a hybrid meeting. I know it's it's hard to deliver it, you know, and make it as meaningful for people who are participating remotely, having participated in many hybrid meetings, both as an attendee in the room, and then also somebody who's trying to make sure that the remote attendees are accessing the session. But it's seen, it seems really challenging just with like the disability access advisory members, TAC, and everybody to have just an in-person meeting only. Um, you know, and I have facilitated a lot of hybrid meetings. I'm happy to help try to do that. And as I said, I mean, I do anticipate that some TAC members would be able to attend in person. Um, maybe we can move it earlier on a Thursday, like four or five. I, that's, I, these are questions I am going to bring up at TAC tonight about what, what is people's availability. So I will have more information after that. I think we're just going to have to poll members of all of the com committees and the staff to find out um, where we have the largest number of attendants possible and just go forward. Uh, as far as timing is concerned, um, ultimately the question is, are we going to try, are we trying to um, complete the work on Southeast Street, whatever that work is? before the school opens and are we still are we still assuming the school is going to be open despite uh the little snag that we have right now with uh, actually accepting the contract uh, mm -hmm. by september of 26 and what kind of timeline does that put in to get to a decision on this because i don't what we don't want to do is uh make it impossible for Guilford and the department to actually uh, do the work. And uh, <clears throat> I think that the, the uh, this came up the other day at, at uh, District 5 meeting that Bob and Anna had a little bit. And uh, I think that what some people tend to forget is that uh, the automobile entrance to the school, the way it is now designed by Denisco, is very close to Main Street. And if we don't do anything, and you have a number of people who are trying to make that left turn into the school, if, you know, if it's going to the number of people who, during those times when people are trying to make the turn, it's going to be tough. Uh, which is why we're having this discussion at all. Jennifer? Uh, so the, I guess this is to Guilford. So if a decision was made in the most timely way, could the, that work be done when the school opens? Or is it anticipating it won't start until closer to? Um. Right now, the way things are lining up, it wouldn't. We could probably start construction, but not finish construction by the time the school opens. If the school stays on the schedule, they posted. But with the, I mean, if they get pushed off a year because of the like um, the bid protest, that we would have a better chance of making the opening date. If the construction is happening after the school, new school is open, will the entrance then be on Southeast and Main Street? I mean, if they can't enter from the front, there'll be other accommodations made? The the de designers of the school have said they don't want to move the entrances. We we, we had a long no. talk about- I mean, even temporarily, if you're working and the school's open, if there's road work going, what will happen then? We would try to, well, our biggest construction season, our best time construction is constructions in the summer. So we would just try to figure it, fix everything in so that we're not really messing up the entrances during the school years, school time, and working mostly during the summer. It would kind of be pushed that way. Okay, thank you. 
but it does seem to indicate that we need to make this process of, as efficient as possible, not delay. George? So yeah, that was my question. Um, we're looking at trying to set up a meeting in November is what I'm hearing. Um, I mean, it's not absolutely necessary, but it, it, in other words, to try and do this with relative speed, if we can, to get get the process started, no reason not to. Um, and uh, so it sounds like we're looking for a hybrid joint meeting sometime in November. Um, Trace is going to report back as to what TAC has to say. Um, I don't have any problem with, you know, adjusting my schedule to meet TAC. Um, and uh, Tracy has run hybrid meetings. Guilford has done them. Um, so it'd be a matter of just, again, the logistics getting sorted out. Um, but if some, November is what we're aiming at. Is that fair to say? I think so. Okay. But I don't know. But it's obviously, it's a joint decision. But that, my opinion is, yes, that there's a benefit to not delaying. Okay. Uh, whether, you know, the the only, re the major reason that I would delay is if Guilford or other staff say, these are complicated issues and we need more, we need more time to prepare. Um, that would be a major reason not to do it in November. Bob? Yeah, I, I was going to say that, that, that it depends. I mean, I'm, I'm flexible. Um, I can, I think we should do this as soon as it's feasible, but I don't want to put a timeline on it because I don't know how much work, you know, Guilford and his crew have to do in order to get ready for the meeting. Um, and then, um, you know, be able to answer the questions and all that. So um, I, I don't think we need to put a timeline on it at this particular point, but I do say as soon as, as soon as it's feasible, we should go ahead. So I would think that uh, what we should do, and I, I, I don't want to put you on the spot right now, Gilford, is uh, if you, you know, you have the questions, uh, and uh, while well, we talked about reorganizing them to make it more efficient, you know what the topics are, so that there's no nothing going to be added. It's just going to be made more efficient. So how much time is needed to uh, have the meeting as you envision it, and uh, once you let us know that, then and you can just let me know as chair. And uh, I'll, uh, then I'll go ahead and send something out to the three committees uh, as far as uh, trying to schedule. So we think it should be just as soon as possible because if people don't like the recommendation we have, we have to start over again. Um, so sooner is better. The only issue I have is if you want me to bring in the designer who actually worked on it, um, I just need to give them a week or two notice so they can make arrangements to be there or have someone else be there. I think that would be helpful if it were possible um, to have the, 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 the brains behind this and make their case. And um, if that were possible, that'd be great. I mean, because there was lots of restrictions we put on ourselves because of what's been re the restrictions that have been placed on us in the past, and we use those as as things we knew we couldn't do. But if you guys, if the decision is is no, we don't like what you propose because of those constraints, and we want to change those constraints, then we have a a different ball game. Although we still have a, if we're not gonna, if we're not gonna move the driveways, we're still we still have the issues we have. So, yeah, are, are the constraints you uh, like taking of taking land from the common? Yes. Mm -hmm. We've never been allowed to do it, and we've always run into problems when we do it. So, that was the biggest constraint we have is not widening the road and trying to keep things as narrow as possible and only take from the common where we actually had to. Um, the other issue is is that the we because we weren't buying additional land or moving the driveway to the center of the center of the block, which we were told early on by the designers they didn't have any money to do that. 
we ended up with the two driveways separated like they are. Um, and the designers of the school don't want to change and purchase the property. Now there might be funds available. Hmm. Yeah, the... Uh, okay. I mean, I've thought about the question of uh, taking some of the common to make a to make a turning lane, for example. Um, so that, but you'd still have a tremendous problem because of the closeness of the main street to the point where people would make the turn. There aren't that many cars you could stack up. That's correct. And and you end up the turn the turn lane is not what you're really adding. You're going to add a through lane from Main Street to College Street is what you're gonna add. that will be a, a complete lane that runs the whole length of the common. And using whatever that street is called to the West, I mean, could that possibly, I think maybe it was um, Bob's suggestion about having a one-way street, does that do any, you know, and then the Forgetting what that's called, that street to the west. I think it's Old Southeast Street. So. Old Southeast. Yes. Okay. Um, actually, uh, uh, interesting, interesting comment. On if you look up the the street names in the old books, East Street is what's in front of the school and the old side. The section from Maine to College Street was called East Street, and the Southeast Street went from College South, and the Northeast Street went from Maine North. So just a. a Oh, so it was East name. Street and Southeast. They were two different names. We, we yeah, know but, what we're talking about, however. Yeah. So. But people have kind of people have kind of forgotten that old time stuff. So I was I I just told you a cute little thing to know in a bar if you want to talk about it over a drink. Um, <laughs> so that's why they call it the East Street School. Yes, and it's the East Street Common, not the um, Southeast Street Common, not the no. Southeast Street Common. Yes. Thank you. That's uh, helpful. Yes. So I, uh, but like I said, it's only good for bar talk and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. So what happened? This may be a problem that could be best solved at a bar. <laughs> it, it might be. Um, yeah. What really does happen is, is you don't have enough room for stacking and you don't have enough room because you have the two entrances. You need stacking at both entrances and you need to have um, the ability to exit and not interfere with traffic. So that you end up basically at the minimum, if you want to do it, with conventional intersections, you end up with three lanes, two straight lanes and a center turn lane, which alternates which which direction you turn or which group is to use the turn lane. So that really is what happens. Um, but you end up adding a 12 to 14 foot more pavement on the common side. But don't we have an additional problem because the common doesn't go all the way to uh, College Street so the it actually does it just narrows down at college street but there's enough room there to put the lane in oh there is okay so uh we know what the problem is but back to the question uh, we'll try and get the I think that I'm going to just have to work with uh, Guilford and Paul uh, and Athena to try and figure out how quickly we can schedule this. And uh, if we reorganize the questions, fine, but we know what the questions are. And uh, we'll con keep going with uh, our contacts with the other committees and try and see what we can do with hybrid. And Tracy, uh, thank you for offering your experience with it. And I think that the idea of kind of uh, people who do logistics for the planning board meeting, seeing how those, those work when they do them as hybrid meetings, getting their experience will be helpful too. So I think we have the basically the answers to those questions. Um, the school safety zone issue is something that's been added to our list and is not a simple matter. Um, and I think that the question that um, I had in effect, uh, Gilfred, who's really getting a lot today, um, 
is to whether the uh, whether you have any thoughts as to uh, whether a school zone around the high school is feasible what and what it would take to get an answer to the question of whether uh, school zones have to abut under current law does it is that something that best DFT can answer can you answer it on just on from your own knowledge uh, how do we go about getting a resolution to that kind of a question so for the school zones yes they they prefer that it be there i believe the wording is should not shall when you read the manual for uniform traffic control devices they say words like shall should and may and they all have a different meaning um shall means that the pre it's a pretty hard and fast rule but you can with an engineering study and with a good reason you can disregard it um so we can make this work um the the bigger the bigger issue is is that do you want to do when you do the middle school it's easy it's just chestnut street boom there's enough frontage on chestnut street middle school is easy High school, there's actually two entrances you're talking about. So would you put one on Triangle at the exit and on Mattoon Street at the entrance? And if you wanted to move the Mattoon Street one into over to Triangle Street, that's a harder that's a harder justification. But justifying putting it at Mattoon is easier, but then that doesn't really give you as much visibility as you have with the exit. The exit can definitely have a school zone there. Um, although the rule about property is a little is an issue, but not a big issue. But Triangle Street, you can have at the exit, but then the entrance is kind of a little bit of a problem for the high school. I hope I made sense. I don't have a map. Yeah. Um, in the process, if we wanted to go forward with it, um, would be that uh, either you as staff or a consultant would have to develop a plan. This this is pretty easy. This we would just we do this in house. Um, Jason, I got Jason working on it already, so we we. Um... So that's the only issue. So if Jason's working on it, I think that answers a lot of our questions as to how we go. Because uh, I did share uh, the Fort River work that Jason did in the maps that, were, that he did for that. And obviously that made it all very easy to make the rest of the process happen. George? So at the council discussion, um, there was considerable pressure and we almost did make a decision to just sort of do this and it would have landed on Guilford's desk. And maybe that would have been the, the easiest and simplest way. Um, but in the end, uh, the majority prevailed uh, saying that we should, we should follow our usual process. Um, and so at the moment, the only thing that, that in my mind is the, the role of the school superintendent and consulting the school um, if that is, I assume it's needed. Um, it seemed like it was at the, at the council meeting. Um, and, uh, is there, so that's something we're going to need to do. Uh, maybe it's just a matter of reaching out and getting a memo or getting some kind of just, maybe we don't need to have anyone come and talk to us. Um, but what else, if anything else needs to be done to move this along? Uh, sounds like Jason's already working on it. Guilford has a pretty good idea of what's going to be required um what other pieces are we missing um uh, since we said we want to follow the process i guess the question is what is the process i think that the problem that we need to also recognize is that they're really uh, a series of issues it got lumped together in one piece and i think that's what made it so difficult at the council meeting because extent you know changing this um zone for uh, times for elementary schools 
which was what was raised by that Fort River group of kids that came in and talked to the council uh, and talked to this committee. That's what their, the, the, their initial issue was because they were thinking of it from the elementary school. I think that's a very separate question from whether you establish a zone at the high school and the hours of the high school. And then, the, and then you have the same thing all over again at the middle school. Uh, is there really a problem? Um, you know, people threw in the middle school, but is there really a problem? There are that many people walking um, into the middle school. And uh, what will um, a school safety zone add? This chestnut, there's already a four way stop. People don't buzz through there the way they buzz through Triangle Street. And one other thing that, that uh, we should all recognize is, is that uh, we actually already voted money to uh, do crosswalks on Triangle Street, I think, in the uh, uh, capital improvement plan so that uh, you could do the crosswalks. It's the, the question of the school zone is to get the speed control. So I guess my question, Andy, is then how do we proceed? Um, and maybe we'll have to come back and deal with this, but I, I just like to have a clear sense of what we think the process should be. Um, I know that at least some counselors um, feel that this should be done sooner rather than later. Um, there's some sense of haste. Um, my argument was that, yes, this is something we should do soon, sooner rather than later, but we need to follow the process. Um, so I'd like to have a clear sense of what the process is and um, what are the next steps for us as a committee and what we think the timeline will be. Um, that's kind of where I'm at. And you, you're identifying a number of issues that are, uh, you know, and some not, yeah, that we need to need to be addressed, middle school, high school, elementary school times, um, con con contact with the school super. Um, just maybe we can't do it right now, but I'd like us to sort of think it through and, and yeah. clear on what the process is going to be. In the yeah, future. I'll come back to that in a minute, but okay. Jennifer. Yeah. Oh, no, I just wanted to ask Guilford, because um, you had mentioned there was an issue, I think, on um, Triangle Street with the, uh, whether the land the property that abuts the street. Is that what you were referring to, whether that belongs to the school? Yes, I'm, I would actually just call it municipal property and just lump it in as school area. But then when you get to, you, you get to where Triangle and Mattoon come together, um, that's, there's not a lot of property there that's, it's it's just kind of iffy if that really is where you want the second school zone to be or if you want to make the school zone across the whole front there between Mattoon and the exit to the high school, which I guess we will look at it, but it's going to be. And then we, we will reach out to the school to ask them what their preferred times are. Um, knowing what's been going on, we would reach out and say, this is what people are proposing. What do you want? What would you throw in for times? So Andy, you had brought up kind of as an aside, maybe during the break in the council meeting, that since the field, which is what abuts the street, is municipal and not part of the school district, is there a requirement for a school zone that it, it has to abut school property? That's or is that something right. we could get around since it's I, municipal property? That's the field. I think we can get around it that way, but then the the question, I mean, the school property comes pretty close at the exit, but it doesn't come anywhere close to that intersection with Mattoon at the entrance. But it's not a problem at the south, at the <laughs> west end by Triangle Street? It's, it's not a problem at the exit at Triangle Street. Triangle Street, I okay. Think. Which is, yeah. Okay, thank you. I thought that I thought the concern was also at that end, but I would hate to think that just because the field is municipal and not school, that that was really an obstacle. That 
Yeah, the, the school it's actually so doesn't bureaucratic. Even, the school actually doesn't even touch uh, Triangle Street. Right. So that was the question. Could could it be a school zone? I hope it can, but can it be if it's not adjacent to school property? Because I think that's part of the requirement. Yes, and I'm pretty okay with saying, and Jason and I have talked about it, I'm okay with saying that it is municipal property and supports the school, and we can put the school zone at the exit. Um, the difficulty That's good is, to hear. The difficulty okay. is the entrance, because it's... Okay. Is there any uh, way of gauging how many people walk to the school and cross at various points? Where are the points that we need the crosswalks? Um, we would have to we would have to put somebody out there at the times people go to school and just do a, a physical count. We don't have the ability to do a remote count. So that's part of the information that's needed. I think Jason would need that in order to really come up with an effective design. We uh, we've talked about that too, how to do it. So we would probably it would probably just be a count. We pick some days and do some counts. But right now, they, there's nobody who crosses at Mattoon Street. Let's see. Hold on. I need my map. There's no crosswalk at the um, at the exit from the school. You have to go down to pray. The exit to the school. I guess I this is where I really need a drawing more than anything. Well, that's, yeah, that's what I wanted to sort of just make the point. If I'm understanding what I'm hearing here, um, what we're doing now is we're waiting to, Guilford will come to us at some point with a plan, with maps and with answers to our questions. And we will look at it, we will ask him questions, and then hopefully we'll sign off on it. But there is no other role for us. He he will reach out to the school superintendent. He will make the connection with the schools. He will do his, his you know, usual excellent job. And then he'll bring it to us and say, okay, here's what we propose. And it doesn't seem like there's any role for us at this point, other than waiting for Guilford to come back to us with a proposal. Is that is that an accurate statement? And if that's the case, then that answers my process question. And then I just need to be patient, which I'm not by nature, but that's all right. And I, all, all I can do is offer my own experience from the Fort River when I was on the select board. Yeah. And uh, Question: It came up because uh, the principal at that time at Port River felt there was a real need for schools on there, and uh, Jason developed a proposal. Uh, Select board knew that Jason was developing a proposal, but we didn't do anything, didn't talk about it really at all until he actually submitted a proposal, which I put in the packet. And uh, at that point, the discussion was uh, pretty brief. That's, that's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm expecting. The motion that was uh, yeah. approved, I threw in that into the packet too, just to give you the complete picture. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I credit uh, Jason's work for uh, moving from the complaint from the principal at River School to the completion of the process that, you know, just sort of went smoothly. Um, and it was appropriate. It, it got to the kind of motion that uh, Councillor Haneke wanted, which was exactly what changes are we approving to the public way, as opposed to we want to make changes to the public way, go ahead and do them. <laughs> and I think that's what her objection was. Yeah, I yeah, I have to agree. I did not understand the logic of that. Um, but the other counselors obviously didn't agree with me. But yeah, let's go ahead and make some changes and you know, whatever you want. And it's like, no, we need to see a map, at least something. Um, and it sounds like that was what will come to us, hopefully sooner rather than later. But Guilford's got a lot on his plate, and then we can move forward. But we have no role to play at this point, um, and which is good. 
and uh, so good. Yeah, so I can uh, just write a report draft back and everybody, Guilford always sees the report drafts also and see if, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, the counselors who were the original advocates will be happy that we are moving along in the question of what hours are appropriate for adjusted hours for elementary schools. Really, we need to hear from um, people in the schools. Tracy, you, you can, you're welcome to raise your hand. But... Oh, sure. Go ahead. So, um, yeah, I've been listening in. I appreciate the discussion. It's great that you'll reach out to the schools or that Guilford will. Um, we do have a member of the Transportation Advisory Committee who's been in close touch with the schools. You know, she's the tax safe routes to school lead. Um, and we've had many conversations with different school administrators over the year. Um, so I know when Doug um, Slaughter was standing as the interim superintendent, we did reach out to him then. And um, he said that he was going to follow up with the town manager at that time. But then there were lots of other things going on with the schools. And I think he also was probably, you know, deferring to the new superintendent. Um, there is... Our Safe Reach to School lead does have a meeting scheduled with the new superintendent for next week, and um, she can bring up this issue too. But the schools are generally supportive, and um, so that's good. And I will say too, I'm a little confused about the question about, I mean, my understanding from talking with the council sponsors is that this school zone proposal that went to the council is just for the middle school and high school school zones both to create those school zones and to decide what hours they will be um, implemented for. And a couple times, and um, Andy, you've done it in terms of the elementary schools and the, those times too. I mean, I think that there are questions about that and in discussions with the council sponsors, you know, that was discussed, but this was considered like standalone in terms of look at the middle school and high school because we do not have school zones there currently. And then I think it would be great if TSO and the council do look, if it needs to go back to the council about the times for the elementary schools, which is what the elementary school parent, um, Jeremy Anderson, you know, whose child goes to Fort River has been advocating for. And that was why he made that original request to JCPC about like speed management with the elementary schools. But I see those as two different things. So I hope that we can, the town can move forward with the middle school and high school school zones first and then go and revisit the elementary school hours separately. And um, and that should be, a, you know, that's an important discussion to have as well, because it does seem like those should potentially be extended. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I mean, I read the, reading the memo, it was a question then of how the memo is written, because I read it as extending hours of school zone, of, of say the school zones, and I didn't separate out because we already have existing school zones expanding, is expanding. Um, but in any event, we recognize that there's a series of separate issues and uh, we can move on them separately. And actually the, uh, because you don't have to go through quite this whole process you could expand. You could expand say, the hours. I think the police department um, chief Ting, what he has thought and say about that, is important too. George. So again, just back to process. Are we asking Guilford to take on both of these, or we're we just asking him to focus on the middle school and high school issue, and that's what he's going to report back to us on, and that's what we're going to. We're going to look at and 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 comment on, and this other issue um, is is separate, and it's not something we're expecting Guilford to weigh in on or to have anything to do with at this time. Is that is that correct, or am I? Yeah, I don't mind asking about all the schools and putting it together as one big change. Yeah, I would I would like that. I would prefer that, but yeah, um, is it, I just want to make sure that's the expectation of the committee. Um, and that that's what Guilford is expecting, so that when he comes back to us, we're not going to go, well, hey, what about X? Well, um, so what we're hoping to get then is is really the whole package. Yeah. 
Um, okay. All right. And do we need to do anything on our end to expedite that? And what I'm hearing is the answer is no, but maybe I'm missing. I think the answer is no. I think that we've had the kind of, uh, we've kind of resolved that in a way because Guilford's already, already has staff, as uh, Jason working on it. Um, the implementation is easy to just readjust the light, the time that the lights flash. If you expand the school zone for an elementary school where the they already exist, and uh, so the the more challenging piece is getting the design for the high school in place, and uh, also, in Kilford might ask the superintendent the question as to whether we really need to do anything for the middle school. So anything else to be said? Um, it is now uh, quarter 12, so I'm not sure that it's worth getting back to scope today. Unless you had anything you wanted to say that would be really a quick introduction to what you intended in the discussion. I think just by way of, I mean, I will, I've already sent everybody a document that hopefully will be helpful, maybe it won't, um, to sort of highlight what changes are being made and what's what's changing and what isn't. And my initial reading of it is that um, that when the, the dust settles, if this proposal goes forward as it's being presented, um, there isn't going to be a whole lot left for the council to do um, related to the public way, um, which, you know, from my perspective, speaking for myself, I think is probably a good thing, but I think that people should be, really think hard about that and and look at the document that's that that will be in the packet for next time and that I've already sent you um, as a pre preamble or prelude um, listing what is changing and what isn't. Um, when I finally at the end of that document um, looked at what was left for the council, um, if I can find it quickly, I think I can. Um, what I found was essentially the council would retain acceptance of public ways that would not change the council would control any long-term uses or alterations of the town commons long term and the council would retain some control over placement of flags and banners other than those specified so it is really um, quite striking um, and whether that's a good thing or bad thing is something we're going to discuss but that was okay. what i took away and when you look through it, you want to see if that's what you took away um, and that I got it right. Um, I think I did. but I, I'm, I'm not sure. And I um, hope yeah. that I'll uh, uh, be able to participate in this, too. When we first <laughs> talked about this issue, she and I were, had, had a little bit of a uh, dollar going on during a meeting in which... Uh, we were trying to suggest that there should be a distinction between a significant change to a public way that um, is, a, you know, a, a street to, uh, in how streets are laid out or regulated, and that that should be a recommendation made by the uh, new commission to the council as opposed to what the commission can enact on its own and uh i'll give i mean the class the the next you know the two examples that we can do most easily are the ones that we're going to deal with now or very soon and that is uh southeast street and uh the amity street university drive and I don't envision necessarily that the council needs to say that that kind of change shouldn't still be a council decision with recommendation from the commission. That's that's a topic that I thought we were gonna discuss. And so that is a scope question. Al, did you wanna add?
So I think Jennifer has her hand up. Yeah, Jennifer. Yeah, and another would be under the scope. I mean, there's probably others, but something like a new park, a municipal parking structure. That's, I think that kind of decision needs to stay with the council. You know, perhaps the commission would have recommendations, but I think um, a decision of that magnitude should also be with the council. And I did want to get back to what I said. I mean, I don't think like the way Lincoln, Sunset and Elm played out and maybe, you know, there may be some decisions that have to be made on with regard to parking on restrictions on Cosby. I, it isn't the ideal situation for a counselor to have to perhaps take that on and that be sort of a project and usher it through. But my concern is just that what comes out at the end with a traffic of traffic of parking commission is that it not be adding to the bureaucracy, but be something that would help would would be allow for public participation and decisions to be made without it, you know, again, just where we have to say to our constituents, uh, you have to go to this big entity and take that on yourself. So when we say streamlining, I mean, hopefully it'll be more inclusive and a more efficient process. But um, so I hope it would be an improvement on having to rely exclusively, you know, on having someone perhaps, perhaps the way what happened on Lincoln and Sunset and Elm, which took so many, many years, more than a decade. I hope that this commission would be an improvement on it and not just add to the bureaucracy. To, so that's my concern that we're just, that we not be doing that, creating more bureaucracy that moves even more slowly. But the final decision, I think what we're talking about with scope is who's making the final decision then. Uh, if you're going to say that there's been parking allowed on Lincoln, and you're no longer going to allow parking on Lincoln or uh, at certain hours, we still have parking. Uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Who's the authority? Who's Does the, the authority, authority, final authority, lie yeah. still with the council to make the final decision after a recommendation from the commission? Or does the commission enact that on its own? Another example, uh, going back to dusty past is when we changed a lot of the parking rules as far as uh, the number of hours people can um, park in the in the downtown area the two hour limit in certain sections that are the highest demand that was made by elected officials who was not made by uh, a commission should that kind of a decision be made? So there are other things. That was a hot issue. So again, my, my observation is, and we'll see what all of you make of it, is that um, this proposal takes an enormous amount of discretion away from the council and places it in the hands of the uh, TPC. Whether that's a good thing or bad thing, I'm leaving for another day, but my observation is that it does in fact remove an enormous amount of what previously was under the purview of the council to a um, bureaucratic entity. And so when we talk next time, I assume the next meeting will take up scope and maybe we'll take up one other topic, I don't know, but scope would be the next one. And when you look at this document, see if you have the same impression I do that um, that's what's happening. And then we'll talk about whether we think that's a good thing or bad thing, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, I don't think there's much else to say. Anybody else? Oh, I can always say on more. November seventh. I don't have it on my calendar. When we meet again? Oh, and we don't meet till the fourteenth of November. Uh, is, that true? is that true? Oh, Let's see. Uh, now I have to get my. Yep, I got one somewhere. Let's see if I. Uh, we're talking October twenty fourth. 
Yeah. No, that's that's today. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I have our next meeting on not till November fourteenth. That, that is correct. November November. Actually, I have one for November seventh as well. I don't know why we have two in we November should, November seventh and November fourteenth. Well, the twenty eighth is is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah. So maybe we are meeting. So we're meeting the seventh and the fourteenth. So we, we're so meeting. That in, is, in, I think so. that's right. That is what it says. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. I didn't put it on my calendar on the seventh. Okay. We don't have to do that. No, no, we should. We have a lot to do. Right? Okay, um, Athena, you um, question for you is: uh, Do you think that uh, Paul would welcome us uh, taking up the town manager appointment, or do you advise that we postpone? It's a reappointment, and I. Does uh, Mr. Kurtz continue to serve on the committee if it meets before, if we delay? Uh, I did hear from Paul. He said that he's sorry that he couldn't join the meeting today. It is a reappointment. If there are questions, you can postpone action. Otherwise, um, you can make a recommendation that the memo should be sufficient unless there are specific questions. Uh, What's the committee's will on this? I have no specific questions. Yeah, none none here. I mean, my, Same my, here. Yeah, see, my problem is, is that uh, quite honestly, uh, Steve Kurtz is a neighbor of ours and so I know him quite well and uh, puts me in a different position. So that's why I was turning to the rest of you. I would recommend it, of course, because I know him. So I think we should just move ahead unless there's a sense that. OK, that so um, if uh, that's the uh, well, then I would like to make a motion to recommend that the town council approve the reappointment of Stephen Kurtz to the Water Supply Protection Committee for a term to expire on June 30, 2027. I second. Motion's been made and seconded. We just proceed to a vote. Uh, Bob? Aye. Council Lord? Aye. Uh, Council Ryan? Aye. Jennifer? Yes. And I'm a yes. So it's five to zero, and uh, the motion is passed. We've made that recommendation. Um, the last thing we're going to do quickly and so that we can get out within our two hour limit um, is uh, next meeting um, in topics. And uh, I think that uh, Bob, you had something you wanted to suggest as a topic. Yeah, I suggest we, uh, we, we revisit uh, the traffic circles or the mini circles, mini roundabouts on Heatherstone Road. I uh, observed the situation as it is right now, uh, as of yesterday morning, and if there are some problems that are that need to be addressed, so I think it's important for us to take a look at what's going on there. And I would encourage every member of this committee to go and see for themselves. Uh, I went around eight o'clock in the morning when the buses, the school buses, were running and the garbage trucks were moving, and and so I saw quite a bit. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and thank you for telling us what times to go. Yeah. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> we will uh, put that on the uh, agenda. And uh, I know that Guilford is probably listening in, doesn't need to talk about this issue because it's not on the agenda for today, but uh, we will put it on an agenda, possibly. Um, if possible, at the next meeting. Anything else, Council Ryan? So I'm assuming that scope would be the next topic and that that would be on the next agenda. And um, that's a question, not a statement. But um, and uh, if other members of the committee would like to volunteer through to Andy, reach out in the next uh, couple of days and say, you know, I'd be interested in presenting X, Y or Z, um, that would be helpful. Um, I don't know if we want to add anything more than that um, for next time, but um, I guess composition, I don't know. But scope, definitely, I think we should take up. 
Yeah. Um, it's my suggestion. One other um, question is uh, we did say we would get back to waste hauler as soon as there's a recommendation from the town manager. And he said it would be at a November meeting. So um, I just want to remind you as I'm arranging the agenda, I'm, I'm sort of trying to do my best to juggle all of the different topics that we're dealing with right now. Uh, so I will uh, consult with the town manager about uh, what he recommends for a timeline to Anything else? I have nothing else to consider for unexpected business. So um, I guess I would take a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. I second. second. Okay, the motion been made and seconded. Bob? Aye. Council Lord? Aye. Council Ryan? Aye. Jennifer? Yes. And I'm a yes, so it's five to zero. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank this you. It's going to be a very rich meeting. Thank you, George. <laughs>